Today, I'll speak about uh, poor management integrated circuits. Um, the goal is to present uh, why you would want something like that in your board, or why not. Um, I'll take a few example on uh, some um, PMIC I actually developed drivers for. Um, so, yeah. I'm Quentin Schulz, Quentin for uh, English speaking person. Um, I'm an embedded Linux and kernel engineer at Free Electrons for six months now. Um, I'm mainly doing work on the, on the upstream Linux uh, kernel. Uh, we have a lot of contributors in our uh, company and also uh, maintainers. Um, for myself, I worked on drivers for the AXP209 uh, and AXP223, uh, um, sorry, uh, for the chip of Next Thing Company and uh, also for another uh, customer we have uh, which is working with uh, Orinner A33 SOC. So, um, a little, a little uh, summary of what I will uh, present today. So basically what is PMIC, that's the main point of it. And then you will uh, discover there are mainly uh, uh, common features in all PMICs, but some have really uh, funny and misc features in it. And I'll, present, I'll try to present a bit uh, of an overview of the PMICs. Uh, so what's actually a PMIC, what you want uh, to get from it, what you can get from it. So a PMIC is a Power Management Integrated Circuit. It handles the power sequence of the board. So for example, um, this is actually the critical part of the PMIC. Uh, maybe you don't know, but your um, SOC needs to have uh, some of the power sequence, we call it. So a uh, regulator uh, to be in for to be on for uh, four milliseconds, then another uh, regulator for four milliseconds also, but then you have to turn it off and turn another regulator, so it's power sequence to get your SOC uh, getting on. This is really, uh, if you don't get this power sequence right, your board will not boot. Uh, so you have two ways to do it, with a PMIC or uh, to hardware, hard code it. Uh, the PMIC also uh, supplies power to the different components inside your board. So for example, you can have 5, 10, 12, whatever uh, number of different components with different uh, voltages as inputs. The PMIC handles all that. Uh, it also protects the board from unsupported over voltage and under voltage. That's quite nice because uh, if you have a faulty charger, maybe for some milliseconds, some, even some seconds, will just output seven volts instead of five. That will just burn your uh, board. But the PMIC tries to uh, protect your board. Uh, it does really the best it can. Uh, you can also have multiple port supplies input in your board. So for example, on the, the chip, you have uh, an AC port supply, the battery port supply, and also the USB port supply. So uh, it can just choose the best one. Uh, so as I said, there are also uh, different mixed features. So for example, GPIOs or ADCs or LED strips or whatever you can think of. It's usually software control wall. So for um, uh, the XPowers AXP20X, for example, it's an SQRC devices or the proprietary uh, bus. But it's usually software control wall. That's the main point of PMIC. Uh, but actually, the PMIC is not mandatory. So for example, on the Raspberry Pi or the Orange, orange Pi, it's not there. So you cannot have uh, multiple uh, external ports to apply at the same time, or you will just burn your uh, Raspberry Pi, for example. That's not mandatory, actually. You can do a successful board uh, like the Raspberry Pi with that one. For example, so um, here we have a board without a PMIC. You have three different components uh, requiring different uh, input voltages. So for example, 3, 3.3, 1.8 volts. So your external pole supply supplies five volts, but you want a different one, a different voltage in uh, each of your components. 
it will just go through uh, DC DC converters or what we call it the uh, regulators. And that's it. So everything is hard coded, hardware hard coded, and it just works. But of course, there is a nicer way to do it. So for example, on the Atmel SEMA 5D3 explained, you have the PMIC in darker gray, uh, which can actually turn on, off, or uh, control the voltage, uh, the voltage value uh, you want the DC-DC converter to output. Uh, the PMIC does that. It handles everything, so switching on, controlling the voltage. And you have also buttons. So for example, the power reset button, if you uh, press the power button for, let's say, uh, two seconds, it will ask the system to uh, reboot. But uh, if you press it for four seconds, then uh, it's, an, it's hardware, uh, hard coded. You just reset manually the, the power supply. So this is uh, a first kind of PMICs, and you can see there are uh, three different battery uh, power supply, sorry. So battery, AC, and USB. And it, also, it can also handle the recharging of the battery. Then we have another one, so for the bigger bone black, uh, still the, th the same uh, components, um, still the DC-DC converters, which are uh, controllable with the, the PMIC, the LEDs, so this is quite a, uh, a funny feature, so you can actually control a LED strip. So, yeah, why not? Uh, you have also the power reset buttons and still the power supplies. And then you have the overkill PMIC from X Powers, the AXP20X and AXP22X. Uh, so you have also GPIOs which can uh, uh, be used uh, either I as GPIOs or as ADCs. You have also ADCs to get current values. For example, the current current uh, your power supply is deliver delivering or the voltage uh, currently uh, supplied by your power supply. Um, you have also RTCs with uh, backup uh, power supply. So you can have, uh, you can keep the time during the reboots, uh, between reboots. So yeah. That's quite an, over an overview of what you can do without and with the PMIC, PMIC, sorry. Um, so as you could actually uh, see, there are um, commonly integrated features. So mainly the, the main point of PMIC is to control your regulators. Uh, the regulators are um, in the regulator subsystems, the drivers, which is located in drivers regulators. Uh, the point is to still to control if it's on, off, uh, and also the voltage control. I will, I will get into that later. So the PMIC supplies power to components requiring different input voltages. So uh, it controls the regulator, actually. The DC-DC converters and LDO regulators handle these, these different voltages. So uh, the main, pof, main point of regulators is that you can save power with them. So for example, you can decide the components uh, your regulators is supplying power to that are unused or uh, useless for your case, for your board. So you just turn them off. So you, I mean, there's a, a, a whole uh, number of uh, components you don't supply power to, then you, of course, you save power. Uh, some components also, support a range of input voltages. For example, you have uh, GPS, which can have uh, as input, uh, as power input between 1.8 and 2.8 volts. Um, you want the, the most power when you want it to fix maybe quicker, uh, but if you want to save power, then you will just send it the less power it can handle. So the PMIC actually handles all that. Um, so the range of input voltages, if you want to switch, in or, switch it on or off. Um, the, the point of regulators, it's, uh, it's really the core of uh, the power consumption and also the, power, uh, the raw power uh, with the undervolting and overvolting. This is uh, how you can actually achieve, achieve CPU or GPU DVFS, so dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. 
So if you want to really uh, overvolt your CPU to be really fast, uh, then you will need this regulator to adapt, and so you can set a really uh, a higher frequency also. But if you want really a poor efficient board, you will need to lower at the maximum level, uh, power your SOC can handle. So without PMIC, you cannot actually do it nicely. Uh, it's the, so uh, as I said, it's the core of battery life and power consumption. Mm, so um, I'll just give some example uh, of each driver, each subsystem uh, impacted by the, the PMIC. And to illustrate that, I will take mostly example from the uh, AXP20X uh, drivers. These ones are all mainline instead of one. I'll tell you when uh, it uh, goes on the slides. So here I will just quickly present uh, an xp 20 x regulator's driver. So you have a regulator uh, operation structure. You set, uh, you give him the functions used to set the voltage, get the current voltage, how, um, how to get the list of available vol voltages, how to enable, disable, and uh, check if the regulator is enabled. So uh, then you will describe your regulator, actually. You will give it a name. Oh, you cannot see my pointer. OK. Uh, you will give it a name. Um, with OF match, you will uh, tell the regulator framework where to find your uh, regulator in the device tree. And a regulator's node is also the node, the parent node of your regulators in the device tree. So for example, if you have a DC-DC2 in the root of your um, device tree, it will not uh, match it because it needs the parent uh, device tree node to be regulators. So we'll have regulators and then DC-DC2. Uh, so the type is, of course, a voltage regulator for, for us. Uh, the ID to um, match against uh, your code in the driver the number of volta uh, available voltages. So here we have the maximum, which is uh, 2.275 uh, volts, minus the minimum, which is 700 millivolts, divided by the steps, which is 25 uh, microvolts. Um, so yeah, the minimum micro, uh, microvolts you can get is 700, and, and go on. So then after you have the the register uh, for which you can select um, the voltages of so V-cell uh, reg, its mask, and the enabling um, register is mask, mask as, as well. And at the last one is the uh, structure we defined uh, earlier, so this one. So uh, that's it for the description of the regulator. Then you will have to uh, actually map things together to uh, Register in the, 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 the framework, the subsystem. So here we uh, use a rec map in the regulator config. So uh, it's nicely, um, uh, we, we just take care of the um, writing and reading on the same registers uh, at the same time by different regulators so we don't get things messed up. And then at the end, we just uh, uh, register or the regulator in the regulator subsystem. So that's actually a really stripped example, but only the really main part of the code are, uh, remain here. So next one with the commonly integrated features are the power supplies, of course, you need, you need one. Um, so here we have three different power supplies, so the battery, the AC, and the USB. The power supply subsystem is in driver slash power slash uh, supply. Uh, the PMIC actually takes care of all possible supported external supply. So here you have the AC, so the socket, USB, battery, maybe you can have a solar panel or whatever you can think of. Uh, it defines, as I said, the power sequence of the board. It also protects from over voltage and the voltage. So for example, AXPs, uh, exports, PMICs, uh, these are mostly designed for five volts boards, but can handle from 0 0.3 to 11 volts. Um, it chooses actually the most suitable one depending on the study of status of each. So for example, if your uh, AC but, uh, power supply is plugged in but does not uh, output enough uh, current, 
you will need uh, an USB power supply plugged in, and it will just switch over to the, US to the USB power supply. And if either of them have an uh, enough current uh, output, it will just mix them together to have enough uh, current going on in the going in the, the board. It also may handle the battery, so recharging, uh, taking care of the recharging cycle of the battery. So that's actually a nice feature. Um, so I'll just present quickly the power supply subsystem. As I said, it's located in power slash uh, drivers slash power slash supply. It has typi typically one driver per physical input uh, power supply. So for example, one driver for the AC, one driver for the battery, one driver for the USB. That's the case actually for the XP20X. Uh, it can expose so I'm talking about the subsystem here. It can expose really a lot of different data. So you have, for example, the current voltage, the current current, the current uh, battery capacity, the battery type, the temperature, the whatever you can think of. And if it's missing one, then you just can add it. Uh, add it sorry. Uh, you can set as many data. So for example, it's really interesting to uh, tell the PMIC what is the uh, the voltage of your battery when it's full, fully charged. Uh, you can also say uh, which, which voltage is the highest uh, supported one, etc. cetera. Um, the, the information you are um, exposing is really specific to a PMIC. So of course you, will, uh, you, you cannot invent uh, an information uh, your PMIC can give. So you, have, you will have to check in the data sheet to uh, check if it's supported or not. So for example, even in a series of the same um, uh, vendor, so the X powers, you have the X, AXP20X, which can read the current current and the current voltage of the AC and USB power supply, but the XP20X, 22X cannot do it. So here we will uh, go with a small example of the XP20X USB driver. So for the power supply driver example, uh, it's quite uh, straightforward and uh, it's already in mainline for a number of uh, releases already. So on top you have um, the properties your uh, PMIC support for this particular uh, power supply. So for example here we can say uh, if the power supply is present or not, so if, if it's plugged in your board. What is the minimum voltage allowed for your board and uh, for, for this power supply, sorry. And what is the current uh, voltage of this board, of this power supply. Um, then just at the bottom, you have uh, the description of your power supply. So its name, its type. So for example, here it's USB, but it can be main for AC or battery for the battery power supply. The properties is, is the the structure you defined on the enum you defined on top, and uh, an interesting uh, part is that uh, you can say which property is actually writable, so which one you can set. That's the function uh, in the middle. You just have to say, uh, I want here, I want the, volt, the minimum voltage to be set uh, settable by the user from C uh, CFS. Then uh, the last two uh, functions, so get property and set property, are the, the function called by CSFS when you ask uh, to read or write to a file in CSFS. Uh, here is uh, the structure which will be used just after, so don't worry. Uh, you can, this is the structure you will fill in or get from CSFS when you write or read to a file. So, here is actually the get and set property from um, what which will be called from CFS. So get is called when you actually echo to uh, sorry uh, cut a file and set property when you echo to a file. So uh, as you can see, the union on top of the last argument of the two uh, uh, functions. This is where you will get. So in get property, get uh, set, sorry, your value. So in vol, in vol, you will put the, the status of your battery power supply, for example, USB power supply. So here we just 
call a function. Uh, in set property, you, you will get the uh, integer you put in uh, the file. So you were called in a file. You can get it with, with a val inval. Um, then you will have to uh, allocate your um, custom structure and put it into your driver data so it can be used uh, along the driver code. And of course, you register your USB power supply driver in the power supply uh, subsystem. So now we can get a little bit, a little bit more uh, into MISC features. So um, you, ha you have to note that uh, all these features are really uh, specific to some PMICs. The, um, the two I presented before, so uh, regulators and post supply are really uh, common things among uh, PMICs, but these ones are really uh, specific. So for example, uh, you have the buttons, so they are all uh, present in uh, the one um, in the ETML, uh, SAMA 5D3 explained the uh, Beagle, bone, Beagle uh, bone Black and the, uh, uh, for example, the chip. And this is used to uh, shut down your system based on how long you press your button. GPIO, so for example, the XP, uh, PMICs have several pins. You can use either, either, either as a GPIO or ADC. RTC with backup battery, a fuel gauge. I'll get more deeply into that later. Uh, more deeper, and uh, the ADC to get actually current data value for the power supplies present in the in the system. So I'll just present the two main um, mix features in the XP drivers. So here we have the ADCs, and I'll also present um, uh, the fuel gauge. So ADC is the way to get uh, current data values, so the current current, the current voltage, the internal temperature, the consumed current, the discharging or charging current, the battery percentage, whatever your PMIC can uh, tell you. It's often stored in registers of uh, an embedded ADC, so within the PMIC. The proper way to do it is to have a driver specific to this part of the PMIC, so for the ADC. And uh, in fact, the subsystem is the uh, ADC in uh, IIO, so drivers slash IIO slash, slash ADC. So a small example of the AXP20X uh, ADC driver. So here we have uh, the small define, which we'll be using in the next slide. So you set uh, actually the type of your uh, ADC channel. So if it's uh, temperature, voltage, uh, current, power, whatever, and uh, if you have many different uh, channels of the same type, you will have to index them, so that's why there is uh, index equal one, equals one. If it's indexed, you have to uh, tell them which index it is, so channel is here for that. You will, host, will, you will also have address, which is the uh, registers in, register in which you will have to write or read to get the value, and also the um, data you can get from these ADC channels. So for example, here you have uh, the row values and the scale, but you can also have the offset, for example. So it's everything you need to compute the uh, process value. And of course, you have the data sheet name, so everyone can uh, uh, understand better your, uh, the relation between your driver and the data sheet. So then after you just have uh, indexes, so the um, the one which will be put in channel, actually. So then we'll use uh, the define I've briefly presented before, so AXP20X ADC channel, and uh, you will do, uh, you will create uh, an array with all the channels you can uh, get from the, um, the PMIC. So here you, you have uh, Vbus V from the USB power supply which uh, gives the I.O. voltage, the current I.O. Uh, voltage of your power supply. And the register is here, which will be read to get the values of xp 20 x Phoebus V ADCH. And um, then you will define ADC scale, which I will call in the next slide, 
to tell uh, how to compute or what is the, the scale for your um, channel. So here, the scale for the, vib, uh, for the current of your USB port supply is 0 0.375. And you return the actual uh, way to compute your scale. So here, it's uh, the first value, so the point of all, will store the the number before the comma and vol2 will uh, store the um, number after the comma, which but in micro um, scale. And if you don't have any scale for uh, um, for channel, you just return minus inval. So here, uh, here are the the functions which will be called when you read from CSFS. So read row. When you write to CSFS, so write row. Uh, you have to, uh, unlike the port supply uh, framework, there is no uh, mean to uh, say this um, property is writable. This uh, channel is you can get it. You can set scale or offset. You have to check all the, the, um, the channel you um, added to your driver, you have to check if you want it to be uh, writable or not. Uh, so here in read row, it will be called either for the row values, so to get one, to get the scale or the offset. So here we get uh, the row values for the USB port supply and the scale as well. And at the end, you have the IIO info structure, which uh, stored the, the function used to read or write uh, from CFS. Um, then, of course, your, um, I said that your, um, to, to get actually uh, current values for your port supply driver, so not this one, the port supply driver, would read uh, your ADC driver which in turn will read the register. So there is no direct access from the port supply to the register storing the ADC values. So of course, the, you need a way to map the ADC driver and the port supply driver. So there, is two way, there are two ways to do that. The first one is to use uh, IO map structures, so as it's presented here. And the second one is to use uh, device three P handles and um, yeah, so um, we went with this one for particular reason, which is explained in the, in the mailing list. Um, so, uh, oh, I forgot. This, uh, this driver is still pending. Uh, it's close to be merged, but still not. Um, so here you map, actually, your driver. So you say the consumer dev, uh, dev name is the port supply uh, driver. So here it's AXP20X-USB-Port-Supply. And um, you give him the consumer channel. So the name under which your uh, port supply driver, so your consumer, will ask for the, the, um, the channel. And also the ADC channel label, so it's the name within this driver, so the ADC driver. So for example, uh, here you have V bus V, but maybe we can call it USB voltage. Then you will have to say ADC channel level is uh, USB ADC voltage. Um, so we also map the current for the USB port supply, and then we just have to uh, register it. So here are a lot of uh, different settings. So um, you set the name, you set the parent node, and also the mode. So uh, on top, on the top right, you have the modes. So here it's direct mode, so it directly access the value, but you can have hardware or software buffer mode. And uh, info is a custom uh, structure. You have also the channels, so the, um, the channels we um, declared before. So uh, here, AXP20X ADC channels on top. And uh, then after you just register it in a map. So, and you register, of course, your uh, ADC driver in the IAO subsystem. 
So now with this, your uh, power supply driver can actually get the values directly from the EDC driver. So um, here we have uh, in your um, get property, so when you read a CCFS file, you will ask the ADC driver to get the process value, so the uh, row value uh, times the scale plus the offset. And uh, it's worth noting that the ADC uh, subsystem expose values as uh, micro units, while the power supply uh, framework asks for, uh, no, sorry, uh, milli units for the, um, for the ADC driver and micro units for the power supply driver. So of course you have to do times a thousand. Uh, then you set the uh, power supply proval. So if it's an integer, you just put it in inval. Uh, so now to actually get your ADC channel, uh, you just need to do uh, IO channel get. And you put here Vbus V, which is the name you put in your uh, IO map uh, structure. So for example, here it was Vbus V. Uh, so consumer channel, but maybe we can put any other uh, name. So this, if I remember well, this is uh, system-wide. So uh, for example, if you, you can have in ADC channel amongst all the ADC drivers any name for your, uh, for, so the name in the data sheet, but if uh, you have to have different uh, unique name for the, con the consumer channel so you can get actually the right one with IO channel get because you don't need to know which is the ADC drivers feeding you um, data. So you just have to uh, get the channel before registering in the power supply uh, framework. So a small uh, word on fuel gauge because that's a uh, trick part. So the battery percentage is actually approximated from its voltage. So for example, you say uh, a battery at four volts, it, uh, it equals to a battery charge at 40%, and a battery at 3.6 volts, it's 20% of charge. Uh, so the battery voltage does not linearly decrease in time or load. So it's rather uh, a curve, which we call the open circuit uh, voltage curve, or OCV curve. The curve is battery specific. This is really important to get. So um, it might be given by the battery vendors. You might have to actually uh, do it yourself. So to charge and discharge a battery, uh, fully a battery. Uh, it also depends on the environment. If the room is hot, cold, humid, dry, uh, the number of charges you have done with the battery, the, the age of the battery, the usage you have uh, how you use your battery. The battery percentage approximation by software must be done in user space. We don't want any computation, hard computation approximation in the kernel. Uh, but some PMICs like the AXP20X uh, have some register in which you can put the uh, points of your uh, OCV curve. So the PMIC will actually do itself the approximation and return you the, the I mean, right, almost right, uh, battery percentage. So this is fine for us. So you use power supply pro voltage uh, OCV. So if software approximated, you only give the points of the OCV curve. And then after, with a user space application, you approximate the actual uh, battery percentage. If it's hardware approximated, like it's in the X powers, XP20X or XP22X, you can actually get and set the points defining OCV curve used in the PMIC. So you give him the points so he can actually uh, compute and approximate the um, battery percentage by itself. So I'll just uh, point it a, a small uh, explanation by TI here. So uh, it's really fast, uh, quick overview of this why it's uh, important to get your OCV curve right. So uh, for example, you have a battery with the red OCV curve. 
and your uh, PMIC returns your battery is at uh, 3.6 volts. So normally, your uh, charge would be 20%. So we'd have uh, your battery, which is your system should return 20% of battery left. But actually, you have inputted the, the green OCV curve. So your battery is at 3.6 volts, and you have you, your system returns, your battery is uh, actually at 60% of battery. That's not, uh, that's not good. I mean, you cannot have a, a really uh, efficient uh, uh, power consumption. Uh, um, I mean, it, you, you get it. You, you have to, to have the right OCV curve, or it's really a useless uh, data you get from the TMIC. So normally, the vendor will uh, give it to you, but you might have to take, uh, a, with a constant load, get the, the, the curve by yourself. Um, so as I said, there are a lot of different uh, drivers. Um, and also, there are uh, drivers which are uh, linked together, so the ADC and the uh, power supply drivers. And the nice way to do it, to uh, have everything uh, probed together, is to use an MFD, so a multifunction device. It will probe the different drivers uh, of the PMIC, so-called uh, MFD cells. It will map the interrupts uh, to the driver which needs them. So for example, you want um, the plug-in interruption of your USB port supply uh, only in your uh, USB port supply uh, driver, so we'll just map them. It usually passes a write map to the MFD cells, so it makes sure the, dr the different drivers do not write at the same uh, register or read the same register at the same time. So a uh, small example on this. Uh, so we have a little bit of the overview of the PMIC and the board itself. So um, we have here the regulators, the ADCs, the, the buttons to pull different port supplies, and the MFD will actually uh, probe every single one of them. So the regulators drivers, the battery port supply, AC port supply, USB port supply drivers, the ADC driver, buttons driver, GPO driver, LED strip driver, whatever driver there is, in, there are in your um, PMIC. So here is a little example on the MFD for the xp 20 x So first you define your resource for your, here, for your USB uh, port supply. So you want to uh, get to define the resource, which is the interruption you get from uh, plugging in your USB port supply. And after that, you define which uh, drivers you want to probe. So uh, inside the MFD cell uh, array, you have the name of your uh, driver. So here, the XP20X USB port supply driver. The OF compatible. So uh, for example, some drivers need um, information from the device tree. So you have the same driver, but some property are uh, different between uh, PMICs, between boards, and that will do the mapping between the device tree and the MFD cells. So it's always the same device. The, then you just define the resources you will uh, affect to your uh, drivers, so to your MFD cell. And in the device probing of your uh, MFD driver, you just add the devices. So here we, we use the parent, uh, parent node, we use the automatic uh, ID selection, and we tell, I want to add all these uh, MFD cells. So I think that's all, yes. Um, so that was all for the PMIC with some examples on the EXP20X uh, PMICs. Uh, so if you have any question, you can ask them now or hit me uh, with a mail or whatever. I'll, I'll be glad to answer them. Is there any question? Okay, all right, thank you. Have a good day.